everyone, I'm Jenya. Um, like Cheryl said, I studied for a semester in Amman and a semester in Jerusalem. Welcome to Jordan, called the man standing next to the unused x-ray machine at Queen Alia International Airport in Amman as he waved me along, indicating that he felt no need to check my bag. His welcome was to presage the hundreds I would receive over the next four months in Arabic, English, and through the medium of hundreds of well-sugared cups of tea and aromatic Arabic coffee. I needed no reminders that I was an outsider in Jordan. Everything from my defiantly curly hair to my secondhand sweaters shouted foreigner. This constant string of welcomes reminded me that I would always be a guest in Jordan, but it also confirmed the reasons that I'd fallen in love with the Arab world to begin with. The very structure of the language is designed for hospitality. To make up for the lack of running water, love flows freely in a sham, and its expressions are diverse. An overloaded plate of grape leaves and tangy yogurt, a cab driver who won't let me round the fare up, and my three-year-old host brother Munir crawling into my lap for a hug. The muddling of personal and private allowed me to make intense connections to people with whom in other circumstances I'd hardly exchange a hello. I was just beginning to drop off to sleep one night in the bedroom of Um Fauzi, the Bedouin matriarch who hosted me in Jordan's southern Badia for a week-long stay, when my hostess sat up, told me that she loved me after only one day, and asked me, would I like to become a Muslim? La shukran, no thank you, I replied, knowing all the while that her question was another form of welcome, an attempt to ensure my safety, not just during my stay in her home, but for eternity. The next day, sitting with her family under the desert stars, we pieced together the elements of Judaism and Islam that we found in common while steaming cups of mint tea warmed our hands. Two months later, I helped my Amani host family decorate their Christmas tree, the first time I'd ever participate in that ritual, and cried because the welcome was so complete I forgot I'd have to leave. Passing through barbed wire fences on the bus from Amman to Jerusalem, um, in, on my last day in one country and first in another, I saw the flags planted in the ground change while the rocky desert scenery stayed the same. An hour later, in a world apart, as I dragged my 50-pound suitcase up the stone steps of Jerusalem's old city, I once more felt like the outsider I was. Then I heard a pomegranate juice vendor call, Welcome to Palestine! I was a stranger again, but I'd meet the people who made this place a home too. <laughs>